Today is Saturday morning, February 8th, and uh, here's the progress I got done this week. So I got the wingtips attached, and uh, they're fairly straightforward. Uh, what I did was I put them into their kind of where they sit, and then I used a ratcheting tie down and put a bunch of padding here and hooked the ends to it and then wrapped it around as close to the rib rivet line as possible without covering the wingtip rivets holes. So that way you can pull the wingtip down into the skin to get it to fit nice and tight down there and hold everything in place nice and tight while you do it. I also fitted both ailerons on while I did it to make sure that the gap was nice and even. And actually a way, another way to guide it was at the very bottom, the uh, inside of the wingtip contacts the kind of the rib there. And then here, it just contacts the bracket. And then here, it goes right at that little notch. So, both wingtips came out exactly the same when I did it that way. It kept the gap even, and uh, everything was good to go. Um, I fitted on my uh, strobes, kind of marked out where they go, pre-drilled everything uh, so it's ready to attach. And of course, don't forget to run the wire through before you actually rivet it on. Otherwise, uh, I don't know how you'd get it out. Um, actually, something interesting about the strobes is when I got mine, they're the uh, Aveo Ultra Daylight ones from Aircraft Spruce. They both have a green sticker. And uh, when I saw that, I thought it was a mistake. But I connected them to a 12 volt power supply with the, the red and the black and the red and the black. And uh, this one's red, this one's green. So maybe the, uh, maybe the green sticker just means it passed the test or something. So definitely wanna label which one's gonna be red before you put them on the plane. Um, somebody, a couple people actually pointed out last week, there was a small dent here. And actually, I went back to look at it, and you can see it's gone now. I went back to look at it and the manual, there's a, let's see if I can, right here, oh, what? right there, there's two shims and the manual says to install one and it includes two and i kind of got desensitized to having some kind of extra parts or missing parts along the way and um i didn't even think to fit it with both and so i drilled out just these two rivets those are the only uh rivets that go through those shims and i drilled them out put them in the second shim and it solved it so thank you to the people who pointed that out and kind of convinced me to go back and take a closer look at it it's much cleaner now. Uh, another thing I did this week was I fitted the uh, front inside skins. So it's coming along, starting to come together even more. So I figure when I paint, I will uh, kind of just put a block here so that I can still spray into here and uh, not have those be in the way. Not that it would matter anyway, I could just paint square over all of it, but that way it can be a little bit cleaner. Also, I have not yet glued in these uh, air duct channels. Somebody told me that you can use just regular silicone caulking for this step. Um, they said that it adheres to the aluminum no problem. Another TSI builder that I've been talking to said this. Um, he used silicone and Cicaflex is, you know, it's strong stuff and you gotta use the primer and all these other things. Uh, that are kind of nasty smelling. So um, when it comes time to do it, I'm going to just use silicone, especially for this, because it's not so important that those air ducts, uh, I mean, you're not gluing the canopy on. So I'm gonna use silicone on that. So that was a pretty cool tip that was pointed out to me. Uh, I got this parachute cable installed with the the bolt there, I mean, it's really nothing. 
uh, from mine, they uh, either it was just slightly undersized hole or there was just a tiny bit of misalignment um, in the parts there, but I couldn't just slide the bolt through cleanly. It's a AN6 bolt. So I actually had to um, drill out the rivets that hold that, uh, I think it's a, something for the seat belts. This guy holds the seat belts in place. And I actually had to drill out that part. It's only like eight rivets that hold it on so that I could get a, a drill to clear that out. So that's why I haven't put the bolt on that side yet. I gotta do that, but it's already the weekend as it is. Um, another thing that I ran into, I was trying to get these, uh, these wheel pants fitted and drilled out. The manual says to drill out the pre-marked pilot holes. There are none. Um, so I'm waiting on the factory to get back to me on where exactly the, the mounting locations are for those holes, because if I don't put them exactly in the right spot, it will, you know, it could sit this way, this way, this way, this way. Um, so it needs to be a nice square fit. So I need to get exact dimensions. Same thing with this, this uh, wheel spat. They're supposed to be pre-marked and pre-drilled on the inside. And as you can see, there's no markings, no drills, or um, no pilot holes. So those mount in here and hold, once again, hold everything square, um, straight and everything. So I don't wanna just try to guess at that and hope it comes in square. Um, so somebody asked in the last video uh, how exactly the, the parachute works. So I don't have, I'm not arming my plane with the ballistic rocket and parachute, which would go in this part of the baggage compartment. That opening, I think, is actually for the uh, cord to get to the ballistic unit. So when you pull it from here, it causes the uh, rocket to go off and blows out a little uh, sacrificial panel that would be right in that area there. So anyway, <clears throat> if I did have it, what would happen is these cables mount there, there, and then up at the front here and there. So if you were to pull it, the rocket would shoot out there and the sides of the, the uh, canopy are very thin right where the cables are. So as you can see, the cables run up through those side pieces here, here, and then through here. And so what would happen is they would actually rip out of the canopy so that it would go up, 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 and up. And so four points, and it's wide enough so that the center of gravity is, you know, it's definitely gonna be somewhere in right here, uh, approximately where the wings are. So that way the, the plane is then mounted to the parachute approximately at the center of gravity, and hopefully you can float down straight. Um, but hopefully that kind of gives an idea of what would happen. So you see how thin it is here and it would just rip out between the skin and the uh, canopy there and uh, ruin the plane, but save everybody on board, hopefully. So another thing is the inside front skins were another part that was adapted from the sling four. And so they don't quite fit. So well, they fit, but the drill holes don't align. So these maybe to about here, maybe halfway or again, two thirds, similar to what I had back there on the, the rear top skins, lined up fine. On the sides, it all lines up fine. On this side, it lines up fine. But from, you could see where I, my line was, the skin, if it sits out where that line is, it lines up still but that's not where you want it because that's your leg room and there's a, a a covering plate for under the front seat right here. And that won't fit in unless you get it nice and tight up against the uh, all these ribs in here. So you basically just mount it, get all these, these sides riveted on nice and tight, and then you can come back through and just drill out and match drill all these. Another thing is right here, 
is actually it comes straight and out and it covers up this uh this rib nut so there's really two options i guess one of them is you could try to match where that rib nut is and pre-drill the hole um, before you install the skin if you do it after you might damage the threads in there um, but i just chose to uh, kind of grind out a little section of it there and i think it came out pretty clean on both sides Oops, right there and i think it came out pretty clean and now this uh this front skin or this uh, little front cover plate here fits in. Um, the side skins, you know, aren't structural, so that little that little bit there should be no issue. Um, <clears throat> another thing I did was, and you can't see it now, I insulated the outside skin and the inside of the the skins here, so that should help with. Uh, temperature as well as noise reduction inside the cockpit once the plane is done. I'll do the same thing on the, the rear skins once uh, they're installed. I've been, all, almost all my parts are down here and uh, I haven't really done much with that issue there. I've got other stuff to do so kind of putting that off I guess. I've gotten uh, the inside rear skins test fitted and everything's ready to go. So actually this week I spent a lot of time just kind of getting ready for painting some of the parts. I think I'm gonna start painting the uh, tail parts pretty soon here and see how that goes. And uh, trying to figure out exactly how to set up the area for painting. I'd like to do it all the way over there and just kind of set up a little sectioned off room with tarps and stuff on the floor and walls and uh, do it near the door to blow out the extra paint outside. Um, but there's no lights there. So it would be really nice to do it under these nice bright lights right here. So I'm thinking to push the fuselage all the way forward, bring this stand out and then kind of set up the painting area here. Um, but yeah, Kind of this stage of the project, I feel like I'm doing more planning than doing, but that's okay because I guess that's uh, how I can hopefully end up with a nice finished product. So that's it for this week. Um, I get to go up to Airplane Factory in Torrance next week and uh, take a look at the completed TSI to uh, take some pictures and some, some uh, inspiration, I guess. All right then, until next week.